many viewers are up. Hi, everyone. I don't know how many viewers we have right now. Um, it says that I have zero viewers, which, of course, makes me oh so happy and excited. Uh, I'm going to use a few moments that I have here to uh, try to find a chat system that we can use, given that the one that I've been using for the last oh so long, uh, well, isn't working anymore. It's not around anymore. So we'll get started in a few minutes. Um, if anyone has any ideas for a chat system we can use at this last moment, I would be delighted. Just feel free to email me about it. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to sign up for one that's not locking me out. I actually was having problems with one of them before. Let's try this. Let's try something here. Da, 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 da. There we go. Create new live event. Oh, oh. Very good, very good. Okay. New live event. Continue. Looks good, looks good. Yay. Install. Fine. I don't need to do anything here. Continue to skip this step. I will continue. Fantastic. So click the message area. OK, and everyone can go, fantastic. I am going to now send this URL to everyone. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to send an email using this. Fantastic. So I think the last time I'm going to use Eventbrite, because I'm getting a little stuck. Oh, I see we have two people. People, yay, yay, yay. So I'm sending out an email now. I have a chat working. I have a chat system working. You can go to it here on chat roll. I'm going to send that to everyone now. Send now. OK, boom, off it goes. Thank goodness on that front. Yay. So we've got some people. We've got three people. Hi, everyone. Uh, please go to, I just sent you email to the people who just came. I sent email uh, with the URL of a chat system that we can use so we can all talk to one another. Um, all right, everyone, come to the chat. That's good. And I don't know how many people we have there, but hopefully people will join, and they will take a look, and uh, everyone will have fun. So I'm going to wait probably about another uh, two, three minutes until um, we get a few more people. Here we got five people coming. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, everyone. Come join the chat room that I just sent you in email. I'm happy you decided to join me here for this webinar on regular expressions. Um, and once we get a few more people and wait a little bit longer for the technical gods to hate me once again today. Uh, by the way, I've been tempting fate all day. I just upgraded. I use a Mac. I'm going to lower this a little bit so the light doesn't get into everyone's eyes. But I use a Mac. And uh, so I, of course, decided to upgrade to what's it called El Capitan uh, just this morning. And I actually taught a full day with it not crashing too much. The only thing it did was it crashed all of my uh, Mozilla things. So Firefox and Thunderbird, boom, all the time. So if I somehow go up in smoke here while giving this webinar, I will know that it's uh, the Google gods and the Apple gods who are against me telling me that I should really just be using um, you know, Chrome or something like that. Uh, anyway, um, I'd love to see people in the chat. You can, I don't know how exactly I can send the chat. Well, I sent you an email with the chat information. So you should be able to see it there. You should be able to join. I'm really hoping that it works. Uh, they told me that I could tell people it worked in that way. So hopefully that is the case. Oh, I see a few people there. Yay, thank you. <laughs> OK, thanks for persevering. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, been a long, it's been a long day, folks. Um, anyway, I just finished my Chinese lesson for the day. Uh, and I had to, like, the teacher wanted to keep going. I was like, no, no, no. I actually have to go and set up a chat system for uh, for people to take my class. Anyway, uh, tell me, folks, where, where are you all from, uh, those of you who are in the chat system? Tell me where you come from. I'm obviously in Israel, where it is only midnight here. Um, by the way, one of the uh, things about uh, Google Hangouts on air versus the chat system is that there's about a 15 or 20 second delay between when I talk and when you hear me. I'm not exactly sure why they do that or how they do that. I guess how they do it is probably not so, not so hard. Um, so what's going to happen is if I ask for questions, then it's going to take a little while for you to sort of get back to me and tell me what's going on. Uh, it's this funny sort of delayed reaction. Um, so you should feel free to uh, you know talk and chat and whatever. Oh, LA, 
North Carolina. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes, USA. Where else would Raleigh, North Carolina be? Actually, I guess the world's a big place, so there are all sorts of possibilities. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to try now to start to set things up here on my screen so that I can then share it with all of you, and it will work well. Ba, 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 ba. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of that. Um, there we go. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. I'm really, really happy that people have decided to join me for this. This is a lot. I love doing these webinars. I think it's just super duper fun. Uh, meet people, hear from people all over the world, get a chance to uh, you know talk to them, get questions, practice some of my material, as it were, all the stuff I've taught before. Okay, I'm going to open this up here. Where is it? Oh, I know. It's right on the desktop. Okay, let's see. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So what's going on here? All right, I am now going to play some games with screen sharing, which I've done in the past, just because it makes things, I think, work pretty well. So we're going to open up what's it called Photo Booth. Okay, Finland, cool. I guess literally cool. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I am now going to share. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to click on the Share Screen button, which is here, Screen Share. And we're going to screen share desktop number one, start that. And now that's giving infinite things. Oh, you can see a picture of my daughter from like 10 years ago. <laughs> she will be thrilled to know that she's part of this. Um, and now let's open up the slides there. She no longer looks like that at all. She is now a wonderful 12-year-old, um, soon to be 13. All right, well, we've got a bunch of people with us. And I'm, as I said, super excited to have everyone here. And um, uh, put it this way, I'm going to keep sort of monitoring the chat to see if you guys have any questions. I should also open my term so I can do that. Uh, OK. Um, so if you have questions, if you have comments, just put them in the chat. And I'll try to pay attention to that while I'm talking and doing various things. Um, this is pretty informal. So it's true that I'm using slides. And it's true that I'm going through material that I sometimes taught in some of my courses. Um, and there are going to be a lot of live demos. But I do hope that there'll be uh, questions, comments, a uh, chance for us to interact as best as we can interact in this sort of time-delayed fashion. Um, anyway, a few words about you folks, for, for those of you who don't know who I am. Uh, so my name, of course, is Reuven Lerner. Um, and I've been doing software development now uh, as my increasingly gray hair uh, indicates for about 25 years. And uh, nowadays, I would say I still do software development, uh, help various companies. I do development on my own projects. I'm the CTO of a company in Chicago on a part-time basis. And I do all sorts of consulting work. But I would say about a good 80% of my work now is uh, nowadays is in training. I go into various companies. I do training. Uh, uh, I would say in decreasing order of um, sort of numbers, it's Python, uh, Git, uh, PostgreSQL, and Ruby. It's funny because I for a while I was doing tons and tons of Ruby uh, um, uh, Ruby training, and then that number just sort of <laughs> went off, went off the uh, edge of the cliff. So I do a lot of training of a lot of different things, a lot of different companies in Israel, Europe, the U.S., and in China. Um, and I really enjoy. I really enjoy getting to meet lots of people and you know hear lots of good questions. And I would say about six months ago, I realized that there's a real hole in the world of regular expressions. That I would try to teach regular expressions as part of a regular programming course, and it just never went well. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to be sharing my screen and showing like this so I can see myself and you can see me too. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, so I um, I would try to include regular expressions in my regular programming courses and it just never worked. It just never worked well um, because I would try to sort of jam it into a course in Ruby, a course in Python, a course in various things. just didn't happen. And so I started teaching a separate course in regular expressions from which a lot of this material is taken. Uh, it's currently a two-day course. I've been teaching it now, I guess, for a few months. And it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it with a, a few companies with whom I've taught it. Um, and so this has sort of led me to the conclusion that at the time has come for me to write uh, an ebook similar to the one that I did for Python. So practice makes Python, 50 exercises to help practice with Python. So strangely enough, I decided to adopt that same name, both because I bought the domain a while ago and because I like the idea. Uh, you know, practice makes regex, where the idea is I'm going to give people 50 different exercises in regular expressions. The difference, the big difference between the Python book and the regular expression book is, of course, regular expressions uh, work on a whole variety of different languages. They're not just uh, a Python thing, obviously. 
Um, so the book is going to include uh, examples in Python and Ruby and JavaScript. And I'm really leaning heavily toward doing it in PostgreSQL as well. So for every uh, um, uh, every you know exercise, you'll have a bunch of different answers. I'm just going to move my microphone a little closer to me here. It's going to be nasty sound. Sorry about that, folks. But anyway, that should make it a little easier to hear me, hopefully. Anyway, so I did a webinar last, I guess, about two months ago, before the craziness of the summer happened, um, about sort of introductory regular expressions. And I wanted to continue it and talk about some more intermediate matters that people don't often get a chance to talk about, or they sort of uh, hand wave or sweep under the rug, so that we could talk about um, some of these ideas and what's happening. So I talked in the, uh, uh, I guess it was the, um, what did I want to say? Uh, in the announcement, I said we were going to talk about back references and uh, sort of uh, things having to do with that. I want to start off first by talking about um, different flags. Now, of all the things we're going to talk about uh, that I'm going to present tonight, and I hope to talk for about half an hour, 40 minutes, then take a whole bunch of questions. But of all the things, this is sort of the most um, Python uh, specific. Oh, when will my book be available? So the plan is to. Um, I've been putting out on my newsletter some sample exercises. Uh, I've done two so far. I'm probably going to do about three or four more once a week over the next few weeks. Um, that'll give me time to write a bunch more exercises as well. I'm then going to put the book up for pre-sale. So I'm guessing about another three, four weeks will be for pre-sale, probably about 10 to 20% done. Uh, and then as I write more exercises or, or sort of rewrite them for my courses and make them available, then whoever has bought it on pre-sale will get it. Um, so I'm hoping really within the next month to six weeks at most to make the book available. And obviously, I'm looking always, always, always for lots of feedback from various people. Um, that's one of the great things about working with people online. I'm always getting lots of feedback uh, and always improving things. Um, that's great fun for me. Anyway, so while regular expressions are not a Python only thing, I am going to use Python for uh, my demos today just because it's, it's easy for me and I think it's an easy language to understand. And a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about are true in many other systems as well. Um, and I'll try to point out some of the differences. But the first thing I want to talk about is just to sort of get through a few flags because I think they're interesting. And they do exist in many other languages, just uh, sometimes in a, a variety of different forms. So the first thing here, let me just like move my slides around a little bit. So uh, we can probably, oh, I know there are ways to like make this, uh, there are ways to like get rid of that, right? There used to be. I was like terrifically prepared for tonight, huh, folks? Uh, slide only. There you go. That was fantastic. OK, I think there's a way to get rid of that. I'm just going to ignore it for now. I'm going to move this over here. And there we go. And it doesn't really matter that much. So the first thing I want to talk about, as I said, is I want to talk about um, um, the different flags. So here's how the flags work. And just to remind you for a second, if I'm in Python or IPython here, I'm going to say now import RE, and that'll bring in our regular expression engine. And now I can use a variety of different methods in RE or functions in RE to uh, um, look for a pattern, look for a regular expression within a string. So if I say S equals, you know, this is a, you know, is a bunch of interesting words, right? And now I can say RE find all, and I can say, find me all the runs of uh, backslash w plus inside of s. And what is it going to give me? Well, it's going to give me all the times that I have backslash w, which is an alphanumeric character. Really, it's the same as the character class. And this I discussed in the last one, last webinar. Backslash w is really the same as the character class a to z, small a to z big, 0 to 9, and underscore. So it's a basically a way of saying, I want letters and numbers. And so what I said here was I want letters and numbers, as many as possible, like the maximum possible, um, and find that, find all of these inside of the string. And so re find all will always return a list. I love using re find all uh, in these sorts of demos and in these sorts of courses because it's guaranteed to return something. If you do re search, right, if I were to do that, backslash w plus, right, on s, well, it's going to return a match object. And then I have to say m equals this. Then I have to say m dot group 0. And that's just like annoying to do if all I wanted to get is one match. Plus, I might not be a bit, uh, I, I might not know how many matches there will be. So I just use re find all for everything. Here's the thing, though. re find all will apply your regular expression to the string. So if I say here, you know, s equals a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, j, k, l, right? And now I can say re find all. And I'm going to say now, uh, let's say backslash w dot backslash w. Let's see what we get from that, okay, inside of s. We're going to see that I get, shockingly, right, 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay, because what's going to happen? I'm going to get the three, and then it's going to cut, then the three, and then it's going to cut. Okay, fine. Um, well, let's try something a little different. Let's try now S equals A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. What's it going to find now? Well, it's going to be a little weird, right? Because it's going to say B, C. It had to find you know an alphanumeric character dot. So I found how an alphanumeric dot alphanumeric. It couldn't do A, B, C. Uh, actually, it could have. Why didn't it find that? That's actually an interesting point. Did I? Oh, oh because da, 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 because it's A, B. It wouldn't have worked because I need A, B, C, right? I need an alphanumeric character there for the third one. Well, let's try that again now, but I'm going to change my string once again. I'm going to change the string to use backslash ends, meaning new lines, instead of space characters. And now if I say re find all, it finds me nothing, nothing at all. And that's because dot, by definition, finds any character other than new line. This is like one of those hard and fast rules in the world of regular expressions. Um, and it's convenient because we often don't want to cross the new line border, new line boundary. So if I'm looking for a word here, let's say I have you know S equals A, B, C, D, E, F, backslash N, G, H, I, J, K, L, right? If I, oh, let's put a space there. If I'm looking for a word, uh, that might contain a space even. I don't necessarily want to cross the new line border. So if I say here, you know, I'm going to look for, oh, well, now this is really you know, already find all. Let's look for you know, backslash W plus and then dot backslash W plus. Once again, it's going to say they didn't find that. Oh, it did. I'm sorry. Here we go. Backslash W, blah, blah, blah. Right. But it can only find it there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. It's not going to ever find anything in here. Um, actually, wouldn't find it there anyway. Let's if I change my string now to be like that. Now it's not going to find it. So this is a problem that people encounter, right? It's going to find def and it's going to find ghi, but it's not going to cross that border, even though plus is supposed to be greedy, meaning it's going to take as many as it possibly can. So what are we going to do in this case? Well, the easy solution is to use, as you can see from the slide behind here, re dot all or res. Oh, sorry, I'm going to try to make my phone a little quieter here so it doesn't. Uh, Make noise during the webinar. Sorry, I should have done that before. Da, 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 da. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, folks. Sorry, my phone is acting up. It's technology problem day here in Learner Central. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, anyway. So re.all basically modifies the definition of our regular expression character. It says this dot here, this dot, it's any character, including new line. Now, how do I do that? Well, I just say, as a third parameter, re dot, dot all. And what do you know? Now it's going to include that. It's going to say backslash w plus one or more characters from within that alphanumeric character class that I described earlier, backslash n, because backslash n now matches that dot, backslash w plus. So we no longer get two separate groups, we get one large group. Now, people coming from like the Perl world, people coming from uh, other places, you know, uh, you've probably seen this sort of thing before. You can have like in the in Perl and in Ruby, you could say back. Uh, you could say at the end of the regular expression uh, slash s, um, and that's why you can also say not re dot all, but you can say r a s. Oh, excellent! I'm glad someone's telling me to increase the size of the font here, folks. It'll take 15 seconds before that happens. One of my favorite experiences teaching uh, was that I, I taught. And uh, in the comments after teaching, they said, we wish the font size had been bigger. We can change this in real time, folks. Anyway, so re.findall, now with re.s, it will do exactly the same thing. And that s is a throwback to some of these earlier languages. For all I know, it could be said as well, where this says s. And s means, actually, I'm not sure what s means. <laughs> but it stands for something. And it would commonly give people a lot of problems. OK, so that's the first one that we can look at. Uh, I've got some examples there. OK, second one, perhaps the most um, useful one, or the most common one, is re.ignore case or re.i. So if I say here, here's my s, right? That's my string. So I'm going to say here, re.findall. And I'm going to say, I'm going to look for an, uh, a D, I'm going to look for def inside of s. And it's going to say, sorry, I didn't find anything like that, because you said I need to find big D, big E, big F. And I didn't find that at all. But I can pass here re.i, ignore case, and now it will. People do this all the time, right? People use re.i. Now, what happens if I want to do both? What happens if I want both re.i and re.s? Well, I can just, they're actually bit masks. So I can say re.i and re.s together. Actually, let's do it this way. I can say here, 
DEF dot GHI. And now it's going to find that because now it's going to include new line in the dot and it's going to look for big or little DF and big or little GHI. Um, it seems a little weird to me, truth be told, that we're using uh, bit operators, bitwise operators, because uh, I really don't use them very much at all, um, except here. So that's the way it works. And hopefully it doesn't scare people too much. OK, onward with some uh, additional uh, flags. Then we'll talk about grouping and so forth. This is one of the coolest things, re.verbose, that you can do in your regular expression. So here's the basic idea. You create a regular expression as a string. And that string becomes increasingly hard to read. Because what's going to happen is your regular expression, I mean, these are the toy regular expressions, right? And that's going to happen in this webinar. So and, and in, in general, we hope that we stick with toy regular expressions because they're so much easier to write and so much easier to debug. Oh, I blocked my face again. Here we go. Let's move my face back there. Hi again. OK, anyway. Um, if we want to, though, make a regular expression easy for people to understand, that's kind of hard because there's no way to sort of comment in a regular expression. And even though we can use a string here, I'm going to just like shrink this window so you can see me a little more. So what we could do maybe is use a triple quoted string, but that's not really going to save us very much because the triple quoted string in Python allows me to have a multi-line string, but then it's just going to look for new lines and so forth inside of it. So what we really need is a way to tell the regular expression, listen, I want to use a triple quoted string. I want to use multiple lines, but I don't want you to pay attention to the white space. And wouldn't it be even better if I could then have comments as well? And we can actually do that now. So I'm going to actually use this toy example again, already find all. And I'm going to say I'm going to look for, well, triple code string, DEF. And then watch this, folks. This is where the magic begins. DEF dot GHI. And I'm going to say here, triple code string. And then I'm going to say RE, oh, in S, always forget that, RE dot verbose. Oh, why did it not work? Oh, because I've got, sorry, treated like white space there. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, fine. <laughs> fine, I treated like white space. OK, that was a bad example. Let's go back to my slide where maybe I'll have a better example that I actually prepared in advance. Here we go. Ha, <laughs> ha. What do you know? Here's this one. So I have an example here where s equals dog. OK, so I'm going to have the string dog. And I'm going to say, already find all. Look for dog. I actually should have worked before, I guess. Dog or cat. Now, could I have just said? dog slash uh, pipe cat. Yes, I could have. But this allows me to have, look at this, comments here. The comments are ignored, and the white space is ignored. So I guess I did something just weird in, in this last one. And I did re.verbose. So it allows you to break your regular expression across a number of lines, putting comments in the lines as well. And that's just like super helpful, um, especially if you have a really hard to understand regular expression. Now, I'm not trying to encourage you to create terrible regular expressions. Um, Yes, I will make the slides after available after the webinar. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I'm. Um, what did I want to say? I'm not trying to encourage you to write totally unreadable regular expressions. But I am saying that if you have a really complex one, then breaking it up into verbose is really good. Also, regular expressions are notoriously hard for people to read and understand. You know, like they're, you know, someone once said, many people have said, they're hard to write and they're even harder to read. So being able to use verbose makes it more accessible to a larger community of people. All right. Let's now, oh, I kind of find a way to, OK, fine. We're going to get rid of this somehow. <laughs> really could have sworn there was a way to get rid of that. OK, fine. Maybe view. Oh, wait, wait. Slide only. Show. Hi, guys. Inspector. OK, format. Ha! Look at that. I've mastered technology. Yes, indeed. OK, that's, that's what you get a PhD for, folks, be able to use Keynote. OK. Um, yeah, and here's, here's a, another fun one. Here, let's actually paste this into IPython because I think it'll be useful to do that. I'm just going to copy this. Here I have my words. Oh, da, da, da. <laughs> Definitely my day. All right, so let's paste our words into here. And now, watch this. I'm going to say for word and words, if RE match, A, B, C, D, E plus. So I'm basically looking for all of the words that have, or I would think, right, an A, B, C, D, E plus in there. All right, so let's say here, four word in words. I just paste it like this. I think I can. Yes. So what's it going to say? It's going to say cab matches. I'm looking for all the words that are only composed of these five letters, A, B, C, D, E. So it matches cab. That's great. It matches bait. That's not good. OK. It matches face. It does not match face. That's good. Matches dad, matches bad, does not match tarantula. 
So everything is great, except for this one. And what's going on here? Well, when I said I want to match, I said I'm looking for a one or more characters from within A, B, C, D, E. And bait actually matches that, right? It has a B, it has an A, so it's fine. Who cares about the I? Who cares about the T? So really, the problem here is either a specification of our problem or the real problem, perhaps, is that we didn't specify a regular expression tightly enough. We didn't say, I want to start it and end it, and then in the middle, there can only be those characters. The way I'm going to do that is with anchors. And the anchor character, if I use a caret here at the beginning, it anchors it to the start of the string. If I use a dollar, it anchors it to the end of the string. So I'm going to now go in and change this regular expression. Let's see how easily I can, oh, I, uh, fine. No, I'm just going to go into Emacs for a second. Fine, and I'm just going to paste this in here, and I'm going to change my regular expression. I'm going to change it so it has to begin and end with that. And if you can't see that now, you'll see it in just a moment when I paste it in. Paste. So take a look at what I've got here. So what I have here now is four word and words, re match, and I'm looking for the beginning of the string. And actually, re match already looks at the beginning. So really, the dollar was the only one I needed to worry about. I said, this is the description of the string that I'm looking for. So it has to start with one of these characters. It has to end with one of these characters. In the middle, I can have as many as I want, really one or more of these characters. So even just the lone A will match. And now, suddenly, our regular expression works better. Bait no longer triggers a, a false positive. And that's terrific. So learning to use these anchors is actually an important part of working with regular expressions. And I use them all the time because I say, I want the whole word to look like this. I want the whole string to look like this. And I can describe it from beginning to end. There's just one problem with these, which is what if I'm working with, here, yeah, fine. What if I'm working with um, multi-line strings, right? Let's say now instead, let's say S is our own word, sorry, right? If I want my words not to be separate like that, but let's say, you know, words equals, oh, now I'm going to get this here, new line, new line, uh, what do I call face? New line, new line. New line. So now what have I got in here? Oh, I didn't want to split it, sorry. <laughs> so now my words are this huge string. Let's even add a new line to the end there just to be nice. Now this is very similar to data that you're often going to get reading from a file, right? If I read in the, the words file, the dictionary that comes with Unix systems, then I'm going to get one word per line. And often I'm looking to match which of those words actually match. And then I really want to match specifically. I'm going to have to have a carrot at the beginning and a dollar at the end. The only problem is if I now do that, let's just do an re find all to make this life easier for me. If I say re find all carrot, right, a, b, c, d, e plus dollar on words, I'm going to find nothing. And the reason is that it's trying to match the beginning of my regular expression to here and the end of my regular expression to there, and it does not find a match. Well, what I really want to be able to tell the regular expression engine is, listen, you dummy. <laughs> I don't want you to be matching the whole string. I want you to treat this string as a bunch of separate lines, and that carrot of the dollar should be matching things on a particular line. Well, that's where re multi-line comes in. Oh, what? Oh, sorry, comma. Phew, okay, fine. <laughs> All right, re multi-line changes the definition of carrot and of dollar, such that they now match not the beginning and end of the string, but the beginning and end of a line. And when you're working with a string that contains multiple lines, this is just a huge, huge help and a really great thing. Okay, so once again, you're seeing that these um, uh, flags change the definitions of some of our meta characters. I see that I'm taking way more time than I ever expected. So we will just like, move ahead a little bit. Um, I want to do some grouping. Yeah, let's do some grouping a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at some of our meta characters. By the way, if there are questions about this, let me know. But I'm going to move on to grouping and then the back references a little bit. And hopefully, we'll talk a little, little bit about uh, look ahead and look behind. Maybe we'll have to save that for the next webinar, but hopefully not too much. OK, so we know that we can use question mark plus uh, star and the curly braces to modify characters that come before them. So for example, I can say here, you know, re search AB plus. And AB plus means A followed by one or more Bs. But that's not what I have here. 
if I look at S equals A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, I don't have an A followed by many Bs. Instead, I have A, B many times. And I can use parentheses to then say, oh, this plus, this plus does not apply to B individually. It applies to that combination A, B. And now if I use our research here, I'm going to find that group. It's going to match there because indeed my string matches A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And so if you use parentheses um, to describe things, you know, it, 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 with, with the plus, with star and so forth, it becomes really powerful. And you can also use it to make a whole bunch of things optional. For example, um, let's say if I say here, you know, URL equals HTTP, you know, foo.com. Hope no one here is, actually owns foo.com, right? So I can do something like RE, find, well, let's just say this. Uh, let's say uh, S equals I will go to, to buy things. Sounds like a good idea, right? RE find all. Let's look for URLs in there. Well, what is the URL going to look like? It's going to look like, you know, HTTP colon slash slash, and it's going to have backslash W plus maybe a dot there. This is not a really good way to do it. I'm going to do this this way anyway. All right. And uh, we'll call that our regular expression. And it found something in there. And of course, we can improve that, right? Right. We can say here that's going to include maybe some slashes. Maybe this last one is going to include some slashes. Right, we can spruce that up in all sorts of different ways. There, oh, I don't want the plus in there. Not that it matters so much. Fine. Well, what if now I'm going to change my sentence? And my sentence will now include uh, colon uh, 80. Suddenly, my regular expression, oh, actually, that did work. Oh, because it stopped there. So let's try something else. Let's try 80 index HTML, <laughs> right? Because everyone types index HTML in their URLs nowadays, right? So if I'm going to go there, let's see if I can reset my terminal a little bit without it going too screwy, although I'm skeptical. So I'm still, right, this is my S, and this is my finding of it. And the problem is basically that my specify here describes things that, well, it doesn't know what to do with a colon 80 in there. Actually, especially doesn't know what to do with a colon. All right? Uh, well, here's the thing. What I can do is I can make that optional in there. I can say I'm going to have a host name. Let's say backslash w uh, dot plus. And then I can say, right, colon, uh, let's say backslash D plus. And then we're going to say slash and a bunch of other stuff. If I do that, well, it will actually find it. But now, right, if I go back and I change my thing and I say, oh, actually, you know, I don't want to have the port number in there. Now my regular expression, where I put it here, is no longer going to match. So I've got this situation where I've got to choose between do I want the port or do I not want the port? Well, I can actually say, I don't care. I'm going to make it all optional. I'm going to say parentheses around this, question mark. Oh, what did I do wrong there? Someone, someone, uh, backslash D plus, what? Oh, because there is none there. Wait, hold on a second. What is S nowadays? S is looking like, oh my goodness, I totally messed that up. <laughs> uh, S equals, this is what happens when terminals go awry. Folks, it is not always such a disaster zone around me technologically, I promise. Just sometimes. And now we're getting that. Oh, because now we don't have there. Let's do colon 80. Oh, okay. Now there are two good things that happened here. The good thing is that now, here, let's say T equals, and let's get rid of the 80 there. All right, so I've got S and I've got T. And I can now say. RE, oops, ah, that's exactly what I want to avoid, S and T. RE find all on S will work, and RE find all on T will also work. Well, wait a second. It's not exactly working, is it, <laughs> right? What have I got here? I'm either matching the port, and I, or I'm not matching the port, and that's all I'm getting back. On the one hand, it's working great, and that's not giving me nothing. On the other hand, it's not exactly giving me what I was expecting. And the problem here is that parentheses are used to group things so that we can have a meta character either appear or apply or not apply. So this question mark here is modifying this entire block of characters. So that's good. The problem is that parentheses actually have two jobs in a regular expression. They, the first job is that they can be used with those meta characters to group things together. So we're treating them as a block. The second thing they can be used for though is as a group that we can then pull out later on or use later on. Well, um, 
The problem is that in Python, at least, and this is not true in other languages that I know of, but maybe it's just an artifact of find all. If you use parentheses with re find all, then it will not return the entire match of everything. Rather, it will turn just the thing that you had in the parentheses, right? And by the way, if you say here, now let's say I'm just gonna put HTTP in there. Now we're gonna get a tuple of strings. Well, we can use this to our advantage, actually. We can just put parentheses around the whole darn thing. And now I'm gonna get a tuple that will show me, here's the entire URL, which is really what's of interest to me, and here's the port. And if I do that with S, right? So here I've got the entire URL and here I've got the port. So this is basically the way that you're gonna work with meta characters that use parentheses when you wanna use re find all. Otherwise, it's really not much of an issue. If I wanna use uh, re search, let's use re search here. I'm gonna say m equals. Now watch what happens. If I say m group zero, because that's the normal thing that we wanna grab, m group zero is everything that it caught. But now we have these groups. We have these two groups actually that we defined. One group that we defined here with this first set of parentheses and a second group that we defined with this second set of parentheses. And always the way it works is that you count parentheses from left to right. Well, truth be told, when we're using our search, we don't care about both sets, but let's just keep them around for now. So I guess now I'll say m group one, and that's gonna give me what it found in that first set of parentheses. I can say m group two, which is the same as m group zero here, just because I did it around the whole darn thing. I can also say m group two, and now it's gonna give me that. And by the way, you might notice that these are the two groups, the two strings that I got back from re find all. So really what re find all is it's saying, oh, you want a groups, fine, I'm gonna give you group one and group two. Normally, if there are no groups, then it gives us group zero, meaning the whole match that it would have found. Okay, well, that's fine. You know, let's go back now to our regular expression for a moment and let's get rid of that first group. So now we're only gonna have one group. So now m group zero will be the whole thing and m group one is gonna be just the port that we caught there. And our question mark continues to do its thing. But you know, we really didn't intend for our question marks parentheses to affect the, the numbering here. In fact, let's try something a little else. Let's add a, a second group here and I'm gonna do everything here at the end. So I basically want everything after the host name. So now M group one is gonna be the port and M group two is gonna be, you know, after the slash, so I've got index.html. That's the like the path, I guess, after the host name in our URL. Yeah, but these are clearly fulfilling two different purposes here. The first one, the first uh, 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 one there is, you know, the, the first set of parentheses is being used so that we can use the question mark. The second group is being used so that we can pull out that group afterwards. So really what I wanna do is say that first group, that should not be numbered at all. That should not be part of our numbering system at all. So really what I wanna do is have a, a, a group, a, a group that's non-capturing, that's not gonna be part of this number. Well, how are we gonna do that? And this is something that the Perl people came up with many years ago, probably about 20 years ago. They said, well, we've got these meta characters like question mark. Question mark always modifies the thing that comes to its left. What if we were to put question mark in a place that it would otherwise be illegal? And one place it would be illegal is after opening parentheses. So if I go here and I say now question mark, that's illegal in early versions of regular expressions. But the Perl people and other Python people and other people using PCRE say, no, 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 this is a good thing. We actually want to use this, right? Why? Because it allows us to modify the parentheses to do different things. And if I say question mark colon, this is like ugly, right? This is why people need re verbose. Now what's it gonna do? Now M group one is gonna be just index.html. Now notice, I've got two colons in a row here, but these are wildly different uses for colons. The question mark colon at the opening parenthesis, after the opening parenthesis, means I do not want to include this in my numbering. It's just for um, the, the uh, meta character purposes. It's not for capturing, which means that we're gonna skip over when we do our counting. Okay, now that's pretty exciting and that's kind of fun. And this is where, here, let's see if we can do this in re verbose just for fun because I haven't abused my terminal enough. So we're gonna do this here, and now I'm gonna say HTTP, I'm gonna to go to the next line, that, right, I'm gonna say that, and then I'm gonna say that. Oh, I didn't really put in comments, did I? <laughs> well, who needs comments anyway, right? Comments are for 
for everyone. Okay. And I'm going to say RE for both. And this should still work. M group one. And it did. Yay for me. Okay. And for regular expression users everywhere. And now I can put in comments, right? Now I can say, you know, find a website. And I can say here, you know, with a host name. I can say here, and an optional port number, which we won't capture, right? And so M group one, we're still going to get the same results. And this will suddenly, if you format a little better than my pathetic view here, right? If you format this, it's going to be great for someone who comes along and doesn't really know otherwise what to do or how to do it. OK. So that's a little bit about capturing. Now, there is another fun thing you can do with capturing here, which is what are called back references. Um, so let's say I have a bunch of words here. Let's see if I can, uh, right, let's just do it here. Words equals um, beat and beat and, uh, I don't know, uh, cool and coal and cool. All right? I want to find, now let's say I have all these words here, fine. So if I'm just looking for all the words, I could say, you know, re find all backslash w plus, all right? And I'm going to say in words. And sure enough, I'm going to find those four words. OK, that's great. What if, though, I want to find all the words that contain two vowels? OK, well, let's just say, oh, actually, uh, uh, two vowels in a row. Let's say two vowels in a row. So I'm going to say maybe backslash w, backslash w, because I know they're all four-letter words, good four-letter words, mind you, right? Not the bad kind. I'm going to say a to a e i o u. We're going to say I want two of those. And well, it found beat and beat and cool, right? Uh, but the thing is, I need to specify my regular expression more carefully, at least in the, the sort of the description space. Did I want two vowels in a row of any vowels, or did I want the same vowel two in a row? Well, it could be either way. If I just wanted any two vowels in a row, this is perfectly adequate. But if I want two of the same vowel in a row, I'm in a bit of trouble here. Because what I want to do is I want to capture a vowel, and then I want to use that same vowel again. Well, this is where things get a little tricky. Well, so, well, we know that I want to now capture a vowel. So I'm going to put parentheses around here, A-I-O-U. And now I want to use that same vowel a second time. So I'm going to say here, right, if A-I-O-U had captured one, I'm going to say backslash one. Why in the world backslash one? Because that means I want the contents of that first group. And if I do this, it's going to fail. Oh, actually, yeah, it's going to fail miserably. And the reason is that I need to, of course, use a raw string. Right now, why do I need a raw string? Because once again, it's a Python thing that backslash one, like it goes to the string uh, parsing mechanism, and then it goes to the regular expression world. And the regular expression never sees the backslash one. So fantastic. I have now found where we have uh, doubled vowels, the same vowel twice. Well, I sort of did, right? <laughs> and the problem is that in this particular case, I did want to, I did catch the two cases in which the same vowel was repeated. But what did I get back? Well, I got back just that letter. And why? Because re find all returns that group. Now, it can't make it a non-capturing group, because if I do that, that backslash one is going to go crazy, saying there is no group number one. So that's not an option here. What I can do, though, is something a little different. I can turn, once again, the entire string or the entire word into a group. And now I'm going to have a different problem, because now it's going to say, oh my god, what an error message, right? Because now I'm saying, look at this. This is group number one, and this is group number two. And I'm referring to group number one within group number one. And Python does not like that. Real expression engine doesn't like that. So really what I have to do now is say, oh, I want to refer to group number two, because the second group. And now I get, look at this, right? I get a list of tuples where the each tuple contains group number one and group number two, where I could not care less about group number two, but I'm going to get it anyway because there's no way around it. And group number one is all the words in which the same vowel repeats itself. Now, this sort of using backslash a number to refer to a group is kind of ugly. And I would argue with the Python world, it's kind of you know, unpythonic. But that's the way regular expressions work. And that's just sort of the way you have to deal with them. So you can refer to any previous group that you want to. And this is known as a back reference. And the people who are really technical and mathematical about regular expressions say, uh, look, that's, um, 
you know, that's not really a regular expression because it does a back reference. And the rest of the programming world basically says, we don't care. We're going to call them regular expressions because we love to say regex. We love to say that word. So there you can see a little bit about how we can do grouping and how we can do um, uh, back references. Let me show you one other cool thing that we can do with these. Um, so if I now say, um, oh, let's see, I'm going to need a good example here for something. Yeah, let's do something like this. As, let's say I have a configuration file. And the configuration file looks like this. A equals 1, new line. B equals 2, new line. C equals 3, right? New line. doesn't really matter. And I want to get all the key equals value stuff in there. So if I say re, find all, and I'm going to say now backslash w plus equals backslash w plus inside of s. And sure enough, I found a equals 1, b equals 2, c equals 3. Well, let's turn those into groups. Let's say groups here, all right? That's going to be backslash done. I've got a group here. And now I'm going to get back a1, b2, c3. All that fantastic so far. Well, we can do even better than that. And I actually need to refer to my notes here, named, yeah, named groups. I'm going to now give each group a name. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to use this question mark, and then the capital letter P, and then in less than, greater than sign, I'm going to say name. So watch what I'm going to do. They say regular expressions are unreadable. I don't know why anyone would say that, folks. So I'm going to say here, question mark, P, and we're going to say this is the key. And I'm going to say, question mark, P, this is the value. I do this, and now we get the same results. So like, what, what did this really help, and how did this really help me? Well, here's the thing. I can then say, uh, watch this, m equals re search. All right? So I'm now going to search for that. Okay, I'm no longer going to use re find all. I'm going to say m group dict. And look at that. Is that snazzy or what? I get a dictionary back in which the key points the key and the value points the value. I've created a dictionary through my regular expression match using the named groups that were here. Now, I'll admit that this only works for the first one, right? So where we had a whole bunch of them before, now we only get the first one back. But I really think this is pretty snazzy and cool, if I say so myself. Um, not that I implemented this or anything close to it, for sure. Um, tell you what, we're running a little short on time. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I can go forever, right? But it is close to 1 a.m. My, my time, and I did promise this would be about an hour. Um, if there are any questions, I'm going to do one or two other quick topics, and if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So feel free, those of you in the chat room, to ask away. Um, let me just talk a little bit about uh, back references and forward reference. Look ahead and look, uh, I'm sorry, not back references. Look ahead and look behind. Uh, let's see, look behind. Here we go. Greediness, yeah, we'll talk about that another time. Next, next webinar, we'll talk about greediness, I guess. So these are fun and interesting and weird. And the idea is this. I sometimes want to define my regular expression such that something comes after something else. So let's say I want to find here, watch this. I'm going to say s equals. And I'm going to say here, uh, this is, oh, I know what I'm going to do. This is a word, word. This is a sentence with a period at the at the end. Okay, I want to find all the words in here. Okay, that we know. I say re find all. You know, backslash w plus in s. So far, not so bad. But I only want to find the word with a period at the end. Well, that's easy too. I just say here backslash dot. Okay, and sure enough, I've now found the word with a period at the end of it. Okay, we're done. You know, end of story. And then the boss comes in and he says, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was all the words that have a dot after them, but I didn't want the dot to be included in that regular expression match. Now, I could, of course, use a group, right? I can just put a group around this, and then I'm going to find that, and that's a sneaky way to do it. But it's still not quite following the boss's orders, not that we always follow the boss's orders. What I really want to do is say, I want to look ahead of this regular expression match. I want to tell the regular expression engine to look beyond this backslash w plus. And if there is a period there, that's great. But it's it's almost you can think of it in the regular expression world as we're advancing a pointer one by one by one. And we're looking at what character is where. So we're now going to really look ahead. We're going to look past the regular expression. And we're going to see, is there a period there? And if so, then we're going to call this a match. And I'm going to use now. So we have positive look ahead. 
and positive look behind. We can look before a match and after a match. And we can say negative look behind and look ahead, meaning do I not want it or do I want it? So I'm going to say positive look ahead, which is our friend, the question mark inside parentheses, equals something. So I'm not going to say inside of parentheses, question mark equals that. And now we have found only the word end. Uh, we have not included the dot in it. Now, the other advantage of using look ahead and look behind is that we can then ensure that if we have sort of overlap among words or among things, we can work on that. So if I say here words equals this is a is a bunch of words, right? And I say split here. Uh, and now I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. If I were to say just uh, re find all backslash w plus, as we know on words, oh, I didn't want to do a split there. That was silly. Right? That's going to give me back all the words. Um, but what if I want to specify a little differently? I want uh, all the places uh, that um, ha that are at the either, I, I want them to have a space at the beginning or at the end. Okay, well, that's fine. But if I say here space at the beginning and the end, watch what happens. Is in bunch. Why is that happening? Is in bunch. What happened to the rest of them? Well, think of it in terms of the pointer. The regular expression engine starts here on this. It moves forward because there is no space there. Ah, it found a space. So it grabs this, and then it grabs that space as well. And then it continues the pointer from this A here. So it can no longer include A. So it moves, ah, here's another space, and it gets bunch. So what we really want to do is to say, we want in a regular expression to have look ahead of that, um, of that space. And I'm also going to say here, look behind a space. I believe that's the character. I'm just going to double check on my slide. No, just less than equal. No. Yeah, less than equal. I got it right. And now look what we get. Because the look ahead and look behind don't move the pointer of the regular expression engine, or they're not included in the match, we get more matches as a result. Okay, so look at and look behind, extremely powerful if you want to look for things surrounding your regular expression, uh, but you don't want it to be included in the regular expression itself. Okay, um, out of curiosity, does doing things with recompile regex followed by find all provide an advantage over the find all regex text? So I have a question here from Murray. Uh, I just read it, but let me read a little, read a little more clearly. So out of curiosity, oh, I guess everyone sees it in the chat. Well, does S equals RE compile of regex uh, followed by S of find all of text provide an advantage? Yes. So here's the basic idea. When we are working with regular expressions, in each of these cases, RE find all, RE find all, RE find all, in each of these cases, we took the regular expression and it was compiled into a regular expression object. And that object is then what is really performing the regular expression work and matches. Now, in these trivially small regular expressions, who cares how long it takes? But if you're going to be doing a loop with a lot of these, let's say I'm going to go through the whole dictionary, right, where we have, uh, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000 words. I'm going to be applying this regular expression. That's going to start to get a little time consuming because with every iteration, we're going to be doing compilation, compilation, compilation to regular expression objects. In such a case, it's definitely better to say something like R equals RE compile. Here, let's just do it here, right? R equals RE compile of this regular expression. Then we get this regular expression object back, right? Type of R is going to be a uh, compiled expression. And now instead of re find all, we say r.findall. Well, r.findall, we're, we're applying the find all method on the regular expression object we've created. Um, I used to actually poo poo this, be very skeptical about the need for it. Um, but even when I was working with Perl years ago, and Perl had this also, it was the slash o option to compile it, um, it turns out that it was really, really faster if you're working, if you're using the same regular expression on a large number of things. So if you have a loop, uh, or if you have a, a list comprehension or some other kind of comprehension, and you're going to be applying the same regular expression many times, I definitely encourage you to compile it and use the compiled object. Uh, if you're just using it once or twice, who cares? It doesn't really matter. All right, so Murray, I hope that uh, answers your question to some degree. Uh, any other questions? I will be happy to answer them. Uh, I'll give another few seconds here for people to um, you know, ask away. Okay. 
All right, well, put it this way. I think I'm going to conclude things here. Uh, I'm sorry for all the technical issues in terms of the chat room, in terms of my screen, in terms of everything, in terms of me being ridiculously tired, but maybe you didn't notice that. <laughs> anyway, I really, really appreciate people coming and asking questions and participating. Thank you all. And um, I, two more things. I've got a, uh, oh, we got another question. We got another question. Yay, yay. OK, try to pull text, text comments out of JSON. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> um, Look, first of all, pulling out JSON, you do not want to use a regular expression engine with JSON. This was a, a, a mistake that a lot of people made when XML first came out, uh, especially people in the Perl world. Like everyone who grew up on Perl um, said, oh, if I have a problem, I will use regular expressions to solve that problem. Um, and that's a mistake in the case of certain kinds of structured text. It's a mistake in the case of H HTML, and it's a, a mistake in the case of JSON. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. <laughs> Okay, comments right. Here's the thing. I, I just would not use a regular expression to try to extract something from JSON. What you could do, of course, is you could use a JSON um, uh, you know, parser to pull out the thing that you're interested in and then use a regular expression uh, um, system to look inside of that text. So if you're looking for all comments, that have that fat match a certain pattern, that's a good thing to do. But if you're trying to extract the comments themselves, I, I think you're just you're gonna end up in a lot of pain and it probably won't even work completely. Um, that's just because they're parsers that work and they're not using a regular expression engine, they're using something com completely uh completely different. Um, so I hope that's uh, helpful. Anyway, before I, if there are more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll just remind you, uh, first of all, I'm sending you know, exercises from my new book to my newsletter. So you can go to my website, sign up for my newsletter using that pop-up box. Second of all, I have another webinar um, coming up a week from today, more or less. Actually, a week from right now, because it's going to be a little delayed, because I'm coming back from a wedding, it turns out. Not mine. I got married years ago. Thank you. Um, anyway, next week I'll be talking about technical training. So if any of you are interested in what it's like to be a technical trainer in terms of the business of it, how it works, what to do, some hints, we'll be talking about that. And I'll do another webinar on probably regular expressions covering some aspects we didn't get to today uh, in about a month. So look for that on the webinar, uh, I'm sorry, the blog and other places. Thank you so, so much, everyone, for coming. I really appreciate it. It's very flattering and fun to interact. And I will see you all hopefully uh, next week and next month and in general on our internets. Okay? All the best, everyone. And I will talk to you soon.